Hi, and welcome to True Crime, a channel dedicated to the dark underworld of criminal activity carried out by gangsters, mobsters, cartel leaders, and others. Let's get started. In this video, we'll discuss the case of Tatsuya Ikahashi, a man wanted for the murder of English instructor Lindsay Hawker, who was residing in Tokyo at the time, but who managed to elude capture for more than two years. Tatsuya would go to great measures while on the run to hide his identity and avoid capture, even going so far as to have plastic surgery done on his own face. He was one of the most searched for criminals in Japan at the time of his capture. But how did these incidents begin? Who was the victim? And how did he finally get caught? Lindsay Hawker We must first discuss the victim before we can begin to tell this horrifying story. Bill and Julia Hawker, who reside in Coventry, England, are parents of Lindsay Hawker. Originally relocating from the village of Brandon, Warwickshire, which is close to Coventry, Lindsay earned a first-class honors degree in biology from the University of Leeds in 2006 while still in school. After finishing her bachelor's, she planned to pursue a master's. In the end, Lindsay decided that she wanted to do something interesting before returning to school. This prompted her to accept a job as an English teacher in Japan in October of that same year. The 22-year-old had no idea that this expedition and round-the-world trip would end tragically. Tatsuya Ikahashi Tatsuya Ikahashi was born on January 5, 1979, in the Jifu Prefecture. Being raised in a successful home with a doctor as a father and a dentist as a mother inevitably put pressure on Tatsuya. Tatsuya ultimately fell short of both his family's and his own expectations when he was growing up, slipping on tests that would advance his career. Tatsuya finally found his footing with a 2005 horticulture degree from Chiba University. Tatsuya graduated at this time when he was already 26 years old. Whether he decided not to look for a job or actually had problems keeping a job, Tatsuya sadly had no luck in that department. Tatsuya eventually relied on a monthly allowance from his family of 100,000 yen. That was approximately equivalent to 700 US dollars at the time. Tatsuya is an introvert with an addiction to physical fitness, according to the authorities. He rode about 25 kilometers a day and routinely went to the gym. Police would later observe that he enjoyed reading violent manga, which some would argue contributed to the incident. Do you think it offers any insight into Tatsuya Ikahashi's thoughts given this kind of background? Do you believe it had an impact on his behavior? How, if at all? Please share your concerns in the comments section below. Their first meeting. On March 20, 2007, Lindsay was returning home from work on her bike when she met Tatsuya. As Lindsay was getting ready to ride home and unlock her bike, a man remarked, you're my English teacher. Tatsuya might be seen standing there as she turned around. She told Tatsuya that he had mistook her for someone else because she obviously didn't know the 20-year-old Japanese native, which made the already uncomfortable scenario even worse. Then Lindsay mounted her bike and rode off, but she soon became aware that Tatsuya was actually following closely behind. Tatsuya's brisk walk had changed into a jog to keep up with her as she increased her speed on the bike. This ought to be a glaring warning sign for anyone in comparable circumstances. Although it is somewhat believable that Tatsuya approached Lindsay from behind and thought she was his English teacher, there is no justification for going after someone while they are riding their bike home. Even in countries like Japan, where the general crime rate is low by most measures, it's always a good idea to exercise caution while interacting with strangers. Tetsuya requested Lindsay for a glass of water when he arrived in front of her flat. Lindsay, being the compassionate person that she was, felt awful for him and consented to let him in for a glass of water. But not before revealing to him that she and her two roommates lived in the same apartment. Lindsay was a wise young lady and she did this to set limits as well as inform her roommates about Tetsuya's presence. Tetsuya offered to give Lindsay private English lessons for a nice price while they were inside but Lindsay eventually declined the offer. Tatsuya sketched an image of Lindsay on a scrap of paper before he left, signing it with his name, phone number, and email address in the hopes that she might get in touch with him later. When Lindsay gave the proposal, another thought, she felt that Tetsuya had improved upon his earlier portrayal of himself. She ultimately made the decision to accept his offer, and the two agreed to meet up for an English lesson four days later. 
the incident. Tatsuya and Lindsay first met while waiting in queue for their drinks at a cafe where they had their lesson. They talked for nearly an hour during their lesson, and everything seemed to be going well. However, when the class was over, Tatsuya checked his wallet and informed Lindsay that he had left it at home. Don't worry, he added, you can stop by my flat and I will pay you then. You see, this is yet another warning sign from Tatsuya. It's one thing to forget your money at a cash-only lesson. But having that person over to your house to get money is something else entirely. There are ATMs, bank transfers, and the option to physically bring money out of your house. But there's no reason to invite someone into your home when they ought to have been paid in the first place. Tatsuya and Lindsay hailed a cab to his residence. Before entering the building, Lindsay asked the driver to wait outside while she went inside to get the money from Tatsuya. However, several minutes passed, in fact, seven minutes had passed, and Lindsay was still inside. But the sad truth is that Lindsay would never make it out of Tatsuya's flat alive. After waiting, the taxi driver concluded that his assistance was no longer needed, and he started his car to return to his work. Later that day, Lindsay missed her shift at work and failed to visit her roommates. People had already begun to have suspicions that something had happened. After two days passed with no sign of her and no word from her, her friends called the police. It was simple to blame Tetsuya since her fellow roommates were probably well aware of her plans to meet him that day. However, the small piece of paper with his contact information that he left at her flat made it even simpler to find him. Two police officers were quickly sent to Tetsuya's flat at around 5.40 p.m. However, all they could do was knock, due to the lack of sufficient proof. At first, it appeared like nobody was at home because all the lights were off and there were no signs of life. However, the police noticed a shadow moving inside the building. A little over an hour after the two officers requested assistance, seven additional officers arrived. Tatsuya, who was already aware that the police were after him, crept out of his flat barefoot with just a bag on his back while the cops were spread over the general region. Tatsuya attempted to get away right away but ran into one of the police officers. The police snatched his backpack and forced him to leave it behind. Tetsu's flat was on the fourth floor at this point, and although there were only two officers there, for some odd reason none of them had radios with them. Therefore, the officers on the fourth floor had no way to inform the officers on the ground floor when Tetsuya slipped out and eluded them. Tatsuya was able to flee into the darkness at that point, leaving just his bag with his workout clothes inside. Police searched his home shortly after Tetsuya vanished and discovered Lindsay's body there, hidden in the bathtub he had placed onto his balcony. Tetsuya had buried her mostly with the help of soil and other decaying materials that he probably had access to as a student of horticulture. Lindsay's body was found to be bound and gagged during an inspection and given the bruises all over her face and upper body, it was obvious that something terrible had happened. Along with the body, Tetsuya's room was covered in Lindsay's belongings, with no apparent attempt to conceal them. Tetsuya's attempt to conceal the body but not Lindsay's belongings shows that he didn't have a very clear strategy for this and the fact that he left his contact information with her and her roommates further suggests that the crime may not have been fully planned. But in the end, none of that matters because Lindsay was still taken from this world and Tatsuya was not caught. Further research revealed that Tatsuya kept several wigs in his flat for reasons that are yet unknown. When conducting their search, the police would take this into account and in addition to posting regular photos of Tatsuya, they would also post Photoshop images of him wearing wigs just in case he was using this method of disguising. Tatsuya was still missing as the days passed into weeks, weeks into months, and eventually months into years. Despite the large number of photographs that were posted and the dead ends the authorities reached, Tatsuya's period of freedom expanded and Lindsay's family's discouragement did as well. They were growing frustrated with the Japanese police for not being able to find the person who had killed their daughter. Capture Tatsuya was finally apprehended on November 10, 2009 in Osaka when he was attempting to board a ship to Okinawa. When the police stopped him and questioned him for his identity, they had received a tip about where he was and where he could be headed. He came right out and said that he was Tatsuya Ikahashi. Tatsuya confessed to his crimes and described his life on the run while he was being held. He continued by saying that, while avoiding capture, he traveled throughout Japan and occasionally stayed on isolated islands. 
when he wasn't moving from island to island, he spent the night at PC cafes. He would primarily accept cash-only construction jobs as employment. During this time, Tetsuya was able to save up an adequate amount of money, roughly 1 million yen, or $12,000, for the future. But because the Japanese police are still looking for him, Tetsuya understood he would have to modify more than simply as close and its locations, even going so far as to increase the first incentive money from 1 million yen to 10 million yen. As a result, the majority of the money he saved was used to pay for two plastic surgery procedures. One to broaden the bridge of his nose, and another to grow a longer, narrower nose. But Tetsuya made the fatal error of performing his own procedures on himself before going to a clinic for professional plastic surgery. These procedures included removing two moles, sewing a thread through his nose to alter its shape, and chopping off a portion of his lower lip to make it look thinner. The surgeon who conducted Tetsuya's most recent surgery was one of many people who learned about him because the prize money at this time was at an all-time high. The doctor instantly provided the before and after pictures to the police, who promptly made them public. This strategy was very successful as one of Tetsu's co-workers in the construction industry also recognized him and informed the authorities, in addition to the surgeon who did so earlier. As a result, Tatsuya experienced a panic attack and tried to carry out the same behavior he had been using for the previous two years. Tetsuya tried to run away and take a ferry to Okinawa, but a ferry worker noticed him and swiftly contacted the authorities according to the recently released photographs. When he was ultimately stopped and apprehended, the search for Lindsay's killer was finally done and her family was able to breathe easier. Tetsuya would later confess to killing Lindsay, raping her, and covering up her body during the trial, so there was no refuting what he had done. For this reason, Lindsay's family advocated for the death penalty. However, because of Japan's position on the issue, they rarely execute those who have committed just one murder. Tetsuya was eventually given a life sentence for his actions at the age of 32. I hope the Hawker family finds peace at last after years of suffering while trying to find the person who killed their daughter. Thank you for watching another amazing video from our true crime team. Like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned to our next real life true crime video. Life true crime video. Life